could possibly be live right now. I didn't get the notification. It says preparing. Okay. Prep, prep, prep. <clears throat> and we are live. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning in. It's Coach Clee coming at you. I got a special guest. I'll introduce her in a minute. I'm trying to get some things out of the way here because you know this COVID got everything messed up. So we got to learn a new way of moving the system, but the train keeps moving along. And we're going to have a lot of fun while we're doing it. But you, thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you guys are safe. I hope you guys are healthy. I hope you guys are still um, practicing safe distancing, washing your hands, uh, uh, exercising, and keeping your immune system strong, and all that good stuff. But thank you guys for tuning in. It's your motivational speaker, your empowerment coach, your author, and your favorite baker's favorite baker, Coach Clee, coming at you. And I hope everyone had a wonderful day. Those of you essential workers, thank you for being out there in the front lines. Those of you who are maybe furloughed or doing other things, thank you guys for maintaining and holding on strong. I hope everyone had a good day today. But I need to know what the energy levels are, and I'm going to ask that question in a minute. But I do remember those of you who have watched the show before and those of you who are brand new, there is about a five to ten second delay from the time that you post a question or a comment till the time that I'm able to see it. So do understand that we may be talking and conversating and, and by the time I see your question, we may be on to another topic. I'll do my best to acknowledge it, but there's about a five to 10 second delay. All right, understanding that point, we're gonna move on. I need to know what the energy levels are. I need to know what the energy levels are like. So if you had a good day today, I need you to put a one in the comment section. Put a one in the comment section if you had a good day today. And you know, Shayla, Shashan, I don't believe in bad days. I like to call them character building days because you can always learn from them. You can grow from them. You can build from them. They're necessary for growth. And if you had a quote unquote bad day, AKA character building day, I need you to put a two. Looks like a peace sign. Put a two in the comment section if you had a character building day. Put a two in the comment section if you had a character building day. And you know, I think that Shayla probably, she probably already cheated. I can't see yet. There we go. Here it comes. Let's turn this volume down. There we go. I see Sean is on. Thank you for tuning in. Please tag, like, and share. But if you had an outstanding, wonderful, totally marvelous, stupendous day, I need you to put a zero in that chunk. Put a zero in the comment section if you had an outstanding day. It's kind of like this is a bubble, and you're right there in the middle of that bubble, and nothing can penetrate that bubble. I'm going to put a one at the end of this live in the comment section because I had a good day today. Shayla, I see you didn't cheat yet. What kind of day did you have? I had a zero day. Of course you did. I knew that's why I said, that's why I paused when I said zero, because I knew that's what you were going to say. I'm glad that you had an outstanding day today. So Sean, I know you're probably new to this. What kind of day did you have today? Fair bro. Oh, we got two zeros. Okay, outstanding. They ain't nothing can penetrate that bubble. Good, good. I see Jason's on. I see Sarah's on. Safran is on. Thank you guys for tuning in. Please tag, like, and share. Let me know. If, I forgot to say this. If you are from out of town and your name doesn't pop up and you want to get that acknowledgement as you, as you so well should, please put your name and where you're from in the comment section. I'll give you that shout out. Make sure you um, keep your questions coming in. Whatever questions you have going on, let me know and we will get those questions answered appropriately because we have an exciting guest. We're gonna have a lot of fun and I want you guys to tune in. We'll get to the meat and potatoes and all that momentarily, but I appreciate you guys checking in. You're on the Facebook page and if you haven't already uh, uh, subscribed to the Coach Clee page, make sure you do that. Just hit the thumbs up, check that. And we're also on YouTube. <clears throat> We're not on YouTube right now because of everything that's going on, but this will be uploaded on YouTube. So if you haven't already subscribed to the YouTube page, which is Coach Clee also, and I haven't posted it yet, but it will be posted above the website, workwithclee.com. And on that website, you will see wonderful things. First thing you will see on that website is my, my, my baby, my pet project. I did this about two years ago. We celebrated the two year anniversary this past March 4th, of course, because it's March 4th. March 4th is your motivational empowerment book on helping you find your own breakthrough. We talk about toxic people, toxic situations. We talk about stepping out on faith and having the courage. We talk about taking care of yourself. So many wonderful key points are in this book. Please check this book out. That's on the website. That's the first thing on the website. Secondly, on the website, Jason Brown, Clarence Stokes, Herb Thompson, and myself. We co-wrote No Shade, All Light. That's on the website too. There's 25 of our favorite quotes and what they mean to us. So it's over 100 quotes in this book with meaning, all right? Four gentlemen getting together writing a book was a, is a feat in itself. So please check this out. Also, no longer on the website is the clothing. This is custom made, but I do have some nice ones. I have some better ones than this one. I do have them in the inventory inbox. We text me, get a hold of me. If you want some Coach Clear apparel, I'll make sure that happens. But what is still on the website is Stark and all the delicious products Stark has. And I'll talk about this in a minute, but that's on the website too. Workwithclee.com. Check that out. What's not on the website, what's going to be dropping June 1st, 
is my second solo book, Hashtag Grudge. I'm very excited about it because it's 98% done and we're doing the, the touch up, uh, 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 touches to it right now. It's it, It's been in the works for a long time. You, you guys have been following, you guys know that, but we're almost done June 1st. It's gonna be here. And those of you who have pre-ordered, I'll make sure you get your copies first and foremost, absolutely. But this is the part of the show that some of you like more than others because here's Shayla with our sponsor. Shayla, do you wanna go ahead and tell us what, what, what everything, all the new announcements? Absolutely. Yeah, Happy thanks. May, everyone. Oh, yeah. Um, May the fourth be with everyone. I know. I'm sorry. I did. I just, just say I'm not going to talk, but it's your turn. I know. All right. I keep telling him he can't talk while I talk. Um, but anyway, happy May, everyone. As I do with all the other sponsorships, I just want to say during this time, just be mindful of some of the businesses that we mentioned uh, may not be open during this time during their regular services or offering their regular services. So please make sure you support them any way that you can, whether it's just liking their Facebook page, Instagram page, anything like that, and just checking them out and supporting them when they are back into full swing. So the first business I want to start with is Hooper Memorial Home Incorporated. They are serving families in need with pre-planning, funerals, and cremation services. They're located at 3532 Walnut Street in Harrisburg. Their phone number is 717-651-1000. We will make sure we have that direct contact information at the top of this live when we're finished. And then we have a new uh, individual to talk about. Paul Hood's newest novella, Paths, The Diary of Bane Adams, has created a literacy crawl space into the psyche of his protagonist, Bane Adams. This twisty, turny story draws startling visual scenes of New York to life. No spoilers here, just know that Paul's writing, liking to the tagline for Maxwell Coffee, it's good to the last page. And I really like that tagline. But that's all we have for May, and I will see you guys next week. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That was beautiful. I appreciate that. I know you love doing that. You did a wonderful job, absolutely. Now she's muting herself out and she's going to log off momentarily. But ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys for tuning in. The meat and potatoes of the show. I know you guys, some of you, especially local local people, you know who she is. You've heard her voice. <laughs> it's a plug right there. You've heard her voice. She is an amazing. I've sat through one of her I don't know, seminars or teachings. I learned a lot. I had a lot of fun. And I, I know you guys are going to, she's going to bring that same excitement. I know you guys are going to have a lot of fun too. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you. an army brat who grew up in Germany, and she has been nicknamed The Voice by Harrisburg, Pennsylvania uh, Poetry Society. She is an award-winning radio broadcaster. She is an author. She's an edutaining facilitator. She's an engaging mistress of ceremonies, a polished plenary moderator, and an unapologetic advocate. Ladies and gentlemen, she's also the founder of Boisterous Media, and the list can go on and on. Trust me, I, I could, I could, I just had to stop writing. It can go on and on. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce Shashawn Dial. Give her some, I know you don't have a studio audience. Give her some thumbs up, give her some hearts. Shashawn, hey. how are you doing today? Well, hello, King, creator, author, entrepreneur, <laughs> motivator, coach. How are you? Yes, I'm wonderful. I'm wonderful. I'm great. I'm glad to have you on the show. And I'm glad your big smile and your voice is right here. We're going to have a lot of fun. I know I know that we talked a little bit off camera. I'm excited about this. Absolutely. I appreciate the invitation. And to share time and space with you virtually, I'll take it any day. So I'm, I'm blessed to Thank be you. here. Absolutely. Absolutely. I see uh, we got a couple guests on. Warren Ritter's on. We talked about him off camera just a little bit, Rick. Because he said he's a, he said he's a huge fan. I see um, Shashan's, I'm sorry, uh, Sean is on. Uh, Safran is on. Thank you guys for tuning in. But Shashan, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, please? Well, sure. And before that, I do want to say hello to that King Warren Ritter. Amazing, uh, absolute instrumental vehicle for getting voice um, voicemail, which was my spoken word CD, okay. to have a literary legacy. I mean, I had always honored him as an artist. He always gave me love. And when the time came, he was like, look, you have supported everybody else, their chat books, their CDs, you've done, mm -hmm. you know, interludes on people's projects. Where is your project? And he called me to the carpet and said, I'm tired of you saying it's coming or enough, let's <laughs> go. And so a uh, voicemail was done in about 30 days. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, and so I honor him. I thank him so much um, for believing in me and mm -hmm. connecting me with Jeff, Jalen, Lindsay, who did all the music on my project. So it's spoken word, 
drive voice and spoken word over music. And Jay Lynn did the bass, the piano, everything. So without okay. those two brothers, there wouldn't be voicemail. So I honor him and the whole fam because Black Love, they're beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, and so just wanted to make sure I got that in. Um, and to the queens, Safran, you're doing huge things in Carlisle. Yeah. I think that's probably my sorority sister, probably, Shauna. Um, so kudos to the queens who continue to create and make and educate and love and nurture. So much love. Appreciate everybody. So, yes, you named a lot of my identities. I am an unapologetic army brat, mm -hmm. uh, black, queer, W-O-M-X-N woman, right, to remind uh -huh. myself that I don't have to define myself by only my relationship to men, love men, right? Um, but I can define myself by who I am and who I'm not. Uh, I am a Gemini, shout out to all the major- Gemini's in the house likewise. That's what I'm talking about, money dance on that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a Gemini, I'm a big sister, a former soccer player, really good Shutterfly book creator. You know, I am mm -hmm. a flawed, work in progress. I have mm -hmm. gifts, I have talent. Um, and so just trying to contribute those to the world, make the ancestors proud, you know, make my blood relatives and my chosen family proud. So it's a pleasure to be here. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's a pleasure to have you. I see Sonya is on. Thank you for tuning in. Please tag, like, and share. Warren, uh, he said absolutely loves you and bless you. Warren, he commented, made a few comments. Thank you very much. But well, right now, and like most of you already know, if she was in the lab right now, I'd tell everyone to grab their pen and their pad, and we learned some things right now. But she's not here, and I wasn't able to get her sample to her in time, but she will get a sample. But this is the part of the show where we go ahead and we, and I, because I said a lot, where we got, I take a sample of this Stark water right now. I got to get that in my system because, like, as you heard, my voice was a little dry. I had to go ahead and, and break up that crack. Coach you with some water over here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And those of you that have not sampled some, let me know. Inbox me, text me. I will get you a sample because it's delicious. It's stark alkaline water. It's a healthier version of water. I think, it, me personally, I think it tastes like a fresher version of water. It's very crisp. It, go, it, it tastes very fresh. It's delicious. Alkaline water helps neutralize the acid in your body. So the more acid your body has, the more susceptible you are to common colds, to flus, to cancer, to so many bad ailments inside your body. If you reduce the acid in your body, you're healthier, your immune system works better, you're hydrated, you lose weight, you sleep better. So many positive things with staying hydrated. So Stark alkaline water is one positive way to stay healthy. So get in, in, let me know. If you want to try some, let me know. But we're jumping right back into this interview because this is the, I, these are the questions that I wanted to know. These are the questions that I can't wait to ask from Sh uh, to Shashon about what is Boisterous Media? Oh, great question. Thank you, so thank Boisterous you. Media uh, is my baby. And I say mm -hmm. that I don't have any earthly babies. No one came through this womb. I haven't formally adopted <laughs> anyone. I am a godmom of three amazing okay. uh, black girl magic. So one is a black woman, Nate, hello, who's a mom herself. Okay. And also uh, Layla, who will be eight in September, and Trinity, who will be six in June. So, um, but Boisterous literally is my baby. It's my mm -hmm. consultant business. It was founded in 2015. Okay. And with a lot of black, you know, micro or small businesses by black women or women of color, it was started out of tragedy. Like it was started out of being pushed out of mm. higher ed. I had worked for a for-profit college okay. and new leadership came in. And uh, the truth of it is the leadership was threatened by mm. what I brought to the table, credentials, passion, service. Mm -hmm. um, but when you're in positional power, you can make some decisions. And so uh -huh. the new leadership came in, decided to get rid of the complete uh, advising department, which at the time I was the director of our advising. And okay. I didn't really have a plan B. I was serving students, serving them well. I was where I wanted to be. And so it became that time where it was like, do all the things you've been doing for these years under one umbrella because you're always going to keep being loyal to somebody you work for. Why don't you be loyal to yourself? Makes right? sense, yeah. And so uh, that is where Boisterous was, was born out of. And it was a combination of everything I do. So many people in Harrisburg knew that I was a poet. I did mm -hmm. have the CD at the time. And I had published two poetry books um, in 2014. So okay. right when I was pushed out, 
um, my then uh, partner, who my ex-wife, uh, told me, now's the time. Go get it done. <laughs> so literally, I was pushed out in September, and I had a double book release that December at Crawdaddy's. Wow. Okay. Look at um, you go. And, yeah. So like, it's one of those themes in my life is that I wait and support. And sometimes I listen to that negative voice too much that mm-hmm. says, why you, who are you? Um, mm-hmm. But once I silence it, then I move and I make things happen. Okay. So, um, yeah. Voiceress was, was started in 2015 and it was diversity, equity, and inclusion workshops, mm-hmm. but it was also voiceover pieces. Um, because I was, you know, a trained radio broadcast and had run 1400 The Touch, which was the only R&B station in Harrisburg at the time. Yep, and yep. I still had those skills. I could still narrate, you know, I could do audio books, I could do voiceovers for commercials or infographics. And so those were kind of the pieces. And, and at the time, it was also, I could do event planning on a budget. Hmm. So many in my circle had thrown milestone birthdays, or commitment ceremonies, because there's a lot of same-sex couples in my life. And, you know, I was that person who could give you an event that looks twice as much as you spent on a budget, because it's okay. it not a shame to go to AC Moore, Michaels, use coupons, uh, you know, <laughs> DIY it. And so that was another niche. Um, I don't do that so much anymore mm. um, as part of the business because the workshops and the facilitation and the public speaking and the consulting just took off more. Um, but Voiceress is a labor of love. It is really something that I own and that is really, really important to me. Um, yes. My parents had always supported black owned businesses. My brother and I had had you know, grass cutting businesses, babysitting, car mm-hmm. detailing businesses. But I think you're always balancing that with go get a good education, rack up, you know, a college degree or a graduate Uh degree. And so I never really owned much of my own. And so Boisterous is that. And so even now when I have a full-time job at Stevens College, Boisterous hasn't gone anywhere. It's, I I pour into it. Uh, I just had my site rebuilt. Um, Mm. And so by a black owned creative, so exciting. Um, Mr. Mr. Sesson, so the okay. husband of Dr. Amber Sessom, uh-huh. um, he rebuilt my site for me, paid, no hookups, paid. <laughs> and, <laughs> That's um, important to say that too, yes. It's important uh-huh. because that was a choice, right? That was a choice on my part to reach out and say, you know, are you willing? Do you have the capacity? Mm-hmm. And it was a choice on his part to take me on as a client. Mm-hmm. And he really rebuilt it. It was photos, it was emails, and it was much longer than I'm sure he anticipated the project to be because I was balancing moving mm-hmm. here and a full-time job and lots of different pieces. But, um, right. you know, I'm so proud that I can say the money to take my site to the next level went into the bank account of a black owned business. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, and so, you know, now I'm in that, that piece of finishing up a contract with uh, Pennsylvania Coalition Against Rape and Domestic Violence. So I did okay. racial justice uh, workshops and facilitations for them for the past year. Mm-hmm. So it's just continuing to grow it. My little engine that could, uh, <laughs> you know, the goals are definitely to get involved in more of these women-centric regional and national events. Um, mm-hmm. Because I think, you know, one of the things I do is I push the boundaries of women, right? I mean, we all have a default image. If I close mm-hmm. your eyes and say, define a woman. A lot of times it's a feminine woman. So I'm one of those voices who's like, what about the masculine women? Mm-hmm. Or we think about a woman of faith. And I'm like, that's awesome. There's also many faiths out here. So are right. we making sure we're making space for, you know, um, Muslim identified women, for Hindu women, for Buddhist women, for mm-hmm. spiritual women who may not have one particular um, theology, but they believe in a higher spirit, higher energy. Right. Um, you know, we may think default, you know, a woman who's heterosexual. Mm-hmm. What about our same sex loving women? Mm-hmm. We may not think about a woman with physical or cognitive disabilities. So, you know, I think that's what I, I know it's what I choose to bring in spaces is we need to make sure when we say women, that we are being inclusive of women, that we mean women of color and Mm -hmm. women who live in these intersections of all these identities. Because if not, we're not being as inclusive as we can be. And we can't get comfortable because there's always somebody left out, right? That's why Make America Great Again is so disgusting. 
Because what are you talking about? Yes, uh, America itself is amazing, mm -hmm. but when has it ever just been some flawless great land? If we go back to the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, somebody was always being oppressed mm -hmm. and many bodies, literally and figuratively. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we can't, we're, we're all too, we've been given too much to be that simplistic. Our ancestors did not go through different things that they went through for right. us to take the binary, the easy out, the black, mm -hmm. white, short, tall, fat, skinny, straight, gay. That is just too simplistic. We are complicated, amazing miracles. And so we got to have complicated, amazing conversations. We got to have complicated, amazing solutions to the different challenges we have going on. Interesting. Yeah. 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 That, yeah, you touched on many things. I'm, I'm, and it's true. It's very true because I know um, you, you're talking about many different varieties of people and categories of people, and we try to make things sim simplistic and put as many people in one category and and everyone else in another category, but not everyone fits in every single category or square peg. And 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 trying to be fair and finding a place for everyone to be themselves and evolve and to naturally grow the way they want it is 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 an amazing feat. It's not easy to do, and it's not something that should be taken lightly. Absolutely, absolutely. And think about the pain. Like sometimes I think. You know, especially as we get older, adults, mm -hmm. you know, we tend to, we don't want to be embarrassed. We don't want to say the wrong thing. We don't want to do the wrong thing. So mm -hmm. sometimes when I facilitate, I tell people, don't even get caught up in that. Think about just the pain. Mm -hmm. Think about the way you have been excluded, ex you know, ostracized, talked uh -huh. about, left out, harassed, humiliated, any of those feelings. If you go put yourself there and say, I don't want any other person to mm -hmm. feel that way, then come from that place. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about whether you can recite all the letters of the quote unquote gay alphabet, or mm -hmm. if you don't know that much about cognitive disabilities mm -hmm. or linguistic disabilities. Okay, I'm not telling you to go get some formalized education in it. I'm just saying, what can we do today? Your zero, one, two, what can we do today, <laughs> right? That uh -huh. is increasing our own awareness that we advocated for somebody else who wasn't thought about, that we minimize somebody else's pain out here who doesn't get to see themselves represented, mm -hmm. who, who, you know, who doesn't get asked a question. Mm -hmm. So I think that's really the heart of our work and it's doing it on multiple levels. Like mm -hmm. if we can't always just do it on the individual level. And I'm challenged with this all the time. We can say things like, oh, people's hearts, or we just need to be kind to each other. And there's definitely a place for that. Mm -hmm. And we have to have the same conversation about systemic things. What is going on for groups of people across the country, across mm -hmm. the globe, right? It can't just be an individual analysis. Yes, you and I got to get up every day and we got to make sure that we are doing what we can, that we are putting in the effort, that we are putting in the work, absolutely. And we have to challenge those larger historical, especially in the U.S. systems that have given certain groups advantages for 400 and plus odd years mm -hmm. and then not, not given that to others. But then we mm -hmm. expect, oh, come on, you've had 20, 30, 40 years to make a difference. What are y'all complaining about? Uh -huh. Are you serious? 400 years and 40 or 60 years. Mm -hmm. No, those 400 still impact what we're going through today. So we have to have analysis or lenses. I always talk about my four eyes now, you know, that we're talking the individual level, the communal level, the organizational level, and the systemic level. And that's a lot. That can be heavy, but we can make it fun. We can make it exciting. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be boring and it doesn't have to be full of shame. Right. It's okay to say, I don't know what I don't know. It's okay to say no one in my family had a physical disability. They had temporary disabilities, often because my family's full of athletes. So, but we still can't turn to a person with physical disabilities and say, I know what your path is like. I don't. Right. right. And so it's okay to say that. The next thing is for me to say, how do I make your life better? How, tell me how to advocate. Tell me what you need. Mm -hmm. Now I'm doing my work as an ally. Right. And the key is we all can be allies to each other. I, as a sister, can be an ally to you, my beautiful Black brother. You mm -hmm. can be an ally to me as a sister. We have the Blackness in common. 
it, we can be allies to people in different socioeconomic statuses, mm -hmm. right? Different educational levels, different family configurations. There's out here blended, beautiful families. Mm -hmm. um, so as an educator, one of the first things I quit doing was on Mondays when I would teach class, or no, the first day of a new semester, you know, I didn't take for granted what a family looked like. So I started using terms like loved ones or your mm -hmm. blood families and your families mm -hmm. of choice. You know, because even when I say birth order, I'm the firstborn. That is my experience. I only have one sibling. He's 12 years younger than me. That is my reality. At the same time, I can't take for granted if I say, what's your birth order or how many siblings? That can be a real complicated conversation. It could be. Yes, it could. Mm -hmm. Because they're going to look at you and be like, well, do you mean on my mom exactly. side or my dad side or my dad dad or my mom mom or, mm -hmm. you know, what do you mean half, whole? Like, who knows? Exactly. So just yeah. the fact that you take an extra minute and go, okay, I'm going to remove this out of my vocabulary and I'm going to open it up, mm -hmm. which allows people to see themselves in it. Right? I'm not going to assume that people have boyfriends or girlfriends. I use partner for everybody until they tell me, if they choose to tell me, what their romantic thing is. Mm -hmm. Right? And so mm -hmm. half, half the time, that's our work that we got to do, especially Black people, because, you know, we like to act like, we don't want anybody telling us what to do because we're grown and we're adults. And the key is, and we still mm -hmm. need to keep growing and learning as adults. It's okay for us to change vocabulary, to take words out of our vocabulary that hurt somebody else. Mm -hmm. It's okay for us to pick up books and read about other people's experience because that may be the closest we get to that experience. Right. 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 You can learn a lot from someone else's experience. Very much so. A lot. And we can learn a lot that was hid from us historically. Exactly. You no, know, I think of, you know, that movie Hidden Figures, that hit me so hard because I'm like, I went through Department of Defense, it's called DOD schools, which, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes in certain circles are considered to be better than your average public school because it's military kids. Mm -hmm. And I never learned about the colored computers. I never learned about Katherine Johnson. Why? Why was that information hidden from me? Maybe there was a scientist in here, but because all the scientists were white men with crazy looking hair, I didn't connect visually. Exactly. Yes, I know. The truth of it is I'm not real good at math, so that wasn't my path anyway, but <laughs> I still didn't see representation that looked like me because that was purposely on a systemic level kept from us mm -hmm. because they knew that would empower us. If we knew there was a whole group of Black women who were doing calculations by hand mm -hmm. on math and space, do you know how many more a astronauts we'd have besides maybe? Oh, yeah. Astronauts? That's unfathomable, yes. Yeah. Uh, incredible. So uh -huh. it's okay for us to pick up books and watch, you know, TED Talks and and podcasts, you know, to figure out and learn what was kept from us. It's not just about us not wanting to read or not pick up books. No, it's about there was facts hidden so that we wouldn't go, I'm from those people. I exactly. Can't. They did it. I can't. You so know, it's I said partially individual responsibility, but it's also partially that systemic piece of like, come on, let's put some stuff in these schools that our children see themselves bring in that are, you know, that are valuable yes yes yes, yes. i see I, I say on the show often that um be self-taught and in today's day and age with uh technology right here at your fingertips i mean i i we grew up with the card catalog we grew up in with encyclopedia brown and all that so you had to actually put in some work not saying that work's not necessarily uh um hard to do or not shouldn't be done to find out the information but you can go straight to youtube and learn so many different things within the same day you can you can I got audible you can listen to so many books while you're working and doing something else you have so many different things at your fingertips there's really no excuse on i i i, I listened the last book that i listened to uh was a book that, about les brown that i would would have never gotten and while in high school or anything like that and listening to les brown speak himself it's motivating and then they listen to his story where he came from and how he rose through the ranks himself it's motivating in itself i'm like wow like if i would have known this 20 years ago in my life i feel like i would have been so much further personally and i know there's so many other people who probably feel the same way about people they never even knew about 
that are inspiring. Listen to Les Brown yep. last weekend. I was clicking around on the internet. I had watched a podcast with Issa Rae, the creator mm-hmm. of uh, Insecure, and another sister who had a podcast. And then right after it, a, a, blo- a clip of him facilitating, mm-hmm. um, talking about yeah perseverance and silencing the voice that tells you no mm-hmm. and absolutely, I mean, incredible. Incredible. I was listening to Miles Monroe talking about silencing the voice so you could hear your inner voice. It's it's interesting that you say that today because I was listening to that this morning, actually. Yeah. Yeah. So those are the choices, right? Sometimes yeah. people get caught up in, oh, are you an advocate? Do you rock a PhD? All these different things. Here's the deal. There's people with PhDs who aren't making the choice to, to, to buy Black or listen to podcasts between mm-hmm. two Black folks. or in, And then there's folks with no formal education who do that stuff every single day. Mm-hmm. So it's about the choices we make, the media we consume. Hey, I'll binge with the with the person in the, you know, mm-hmm. right next to me. At the same time, in this COVID, I have finished three books, you know, which is the most that I have finished in a while. Because right, I would okay. give myself permission, right? To be like, mm-hmm. oh, I got time. Mm-hmm. Um, but even with working, I was like, get focused. Like, I, I needed more coping mechanisms to get through all this stuff. Mm-hmm. And for me, picking up a book brought me comfort. And now I'm hooked again. Now I'm reading like crazy. So it's about the choices we make every day. Absolutely. Absolutely. I want to give the. I, I know Jason's been on for a while. Thank you, Jason Brown, for tuning in. Please tag, like, and share. He said a couple things. We are perfectly imperfect. Uh, Shayla says she loves listening to Shashan speak. I uh, see uh, Vina's on. Thank you for tuning in. Please tag, like, and share. Uh, Jason also said, how can I help? As in, um, we can ask, how can I help to uh, when we were talking about uh, yeah. equality and being yeah. allies? Um, yeah. uh, thank you, Jason. I appreciate that. Now, you said I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be right now. Aaron T. Lewis is on. Thank you for tuning in. Please tag, like, and share. And Warren said, Miss Dow is very powerful. Speak, sister. He's basically giving you the money dance, telling you to preach and keep it on. Keep it going. Keep it going. Absolutely. But I know, and, and you come across very passionately and very strongly. Uh, and being on the radio, did you actually, were you a public speaker before you were on the radio or was that during or a little bit after? Mm, beautiful question. So I think it's a little bit of everything. So, Mm -hmm. um, you know, by all means, I give honor to the ancestors and the creator. I inherited this voice. It is something since when I was a little girl or maybe right around puberty, when the voice dropped, you can get made fun of, right? Mm Because these voices are normally supposed to be just for guys. Mm -hmm. But I quickly learned that a lot of women with deep voices are your radio announcers. Okay. They are your TV broadcasters. Okay. And so... It, I kind of quit, went through a couple years of that awkward stage, right? Mm-hmm. Of why is my name so different? Mm-hmm. I'm the new girl everywhere I move. So I went through a couple years of that. But mm-hmm. then at a point you go, this isn't going to change. Like I'm not legally changing my name. <laughs> um, my parents are going to continue to move until my dad retires. Mm-hmm. So there's that switch that kind of happens where you're mm-hmm. like, I'm going to make the best of this. Um, for me, that happened when we were stationed in Korea. So my first two years of high school were in Seoul, Korea. Okay. And I remember yeah. crying, like I was trying to talk to friends and get their parents to let me stay because we were in Niagara Falls, New York at the time. Because, mm-hmm. you know, I was finishing eighth grade. I, and so now I was getting ready to go to a high school and was mm-hmm. in Korea with people I don't know. And, you know, I boohooed and my dad was like, get your behind on the plane. <laughs> you know, he's the colonel. So I was uh-huh. like, whatever. And literally two years later, I cried and pitched a fit. I didn't want to leave Korea. Wow. Two year full complete. Exactly. Look at that turnaround. Uh And it was because that was the place that was going to be like, do you realize how fortunate you are to travel the world? Your first two years are going to be in high school. Um, I didn't learn to drive until later, but I was navigating subways that were written in Hangul because the 1988 Olympics had been there. And we were there from 90 to 92. Mm-hmm. So I'm 16. I got 20 bucks in my pocket. I can count to 20 in Hangul, the language there. And I'm navigating seeing where the Olympics were. Okay, I think I'll take that, right? <laughs> yeah, and exactly. So, and, and being okay with the fact that, yes, I'm weepy in airports. It's much easier for me to say goodbye to people than to have people say goodbye to me. Mm. I mean, you just hold space for those truths that coexist. Um, and so... 
Um, absolutely. So um, going back, um, remind me, because I went on a uh, public speaking. Oh, public speaking. So um, my parents, so the ancestors gave me the voice. My dad did some radio announcing in college. Okay. So literally, I woke up Saturday mornings, which was chores, clean the house, mm -hmm. cut the grass, wax the car. He would have smooth jazz on, and he would play like he was the radio announcer. Okay. So, and my dad was a coach. Like, he coached the Army men's basketball team, and mm -hmm. he would do some announcing for that. So I kind of okay. always saw images of that, but he, it wasn't his full-time job. He was a soldier. Mm -hmm. Um, and then my parents put me in everything. I was in every Easter recital, nativity, <laughs> essay writing, whether uh -huh. it was church related, Kiwanis Club. It, they put me in it. To I, be I believe in that. I believe that's also, that's very positive and very good. Yes. I, I mean, everything. I mean, I'd be, mm -hmm. you know, I don't want, I don't want it. They were like, mm -hmm. you don't have a choice. <laughs> so that definitely put in. You know, what do they say? It takes like 10,000 hours at something yep. for you to become good. Uh -huh. so people think that's just since I've been an adult. No, 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 no. I was crafting these mm -hmm. skills when I was in middle and high school. Mm -hmm. um, and so by the time I got to college, I was a pretty good, engaging public speaker. It, it's not a fear for me. I really feel for those that it is. But mm -hmm. public speaking for me is like breathing. So... Uh, I was a philosophy, law, and rhetoric major at undergrad, Stevens College, okay. uh, which is a women's college in Columbia, Missouri. And I tell people now, I thought I was in that degree to go to law school. Mm -hmm. mm -mm. I was in that to get transferable skills. And one of them was how to become an oral and a written communicator, mm -hmm. how to construct and how to deconstruct arguments, how to mm -hmm. engage people. You know, mm -hmm. pesos, egos, lothos, like how to think about your argument, how to come off with credibility about your argument, and how to tailor your argument to the audience. So I, those are the skills I picked up. I didn't have that language when I was mm -hmm. 18 to 22. I was like, I'm learning this when I go to law school, make mm -hmm. a lot of money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, when I applied to nine law schools and got rejected from eight, it was a game changer. Yeah. And I didn't have a plan B. And so... You know, all those things that you know your past being put before you, but you have no idea what's going on. Exactly. The pieces um, fit together backwards. I'm telling you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, that major was huge because it, it taught me, continued to do that. And while I was an undergrad, I did everything I could at the radio station. Mm -hmm. We've never paid a dime because my work study was something different. I was in the mm -hmm. PR office, um, but I volunteered at the radio station. And I tell everybody, trust me, I advocate for paid internships. That is a form mm. of economic justice. Oh, At yes. At the same time, if there isn't a paid one available, don't throw your nose at a non-paid one mm -hmm. because that could translate into an opportunity later. Mm -hmm. I, have, I have always been public. I got the job at 1400 The Touch based on my resume, which was all the experience I had at Stevens College radio station, KWWC, okay. and one summer of doing radio at Virginia State University when I took a Spanish class. Hmm. So my dad was the professor of military science at Virginia State University in Petersburg, Virginia. And so I Word volunteered me. there, didn't get paid, and mm -hmm. at even and two non-paid jobs, not my major, not a formal internship, mm -hmm. is how I got the job. <laughs> of the program director of 1400 to touch. So I tell people all the time, get the skills, get the familiarity with it, know mm -hmm. how to be able to package yourself to mm -hmm. an employer, because once you get in there, your work ethic should be able to take you. I didn't know exactly. how to operate that specific board that was in the touch studios, but mm -hmm. I learned how to do it within three days. Mm -hmm. And then I just kept you know, getting good and learning this and learning that and trial and error. But if you Bro, only go for things because you think you've got to know it before you get there. You're going to be sitting on the sideline all the time then, yes. Waiting to be saved. Mm -hmm. And who comes and saves Black folks? And nobody. Nobody. Exactly. So it was really a combination of like my parents putting me in stuff and practicing mm -hmm. my undergrad major and the skills they wanted us to have. 
Um, so by the time I got to the touch, then it just became learn your craft, which I know mm -hmm. you know, right? Mm -hmm. like any exactly. identification that you have, you need to learn and study that craft. Mm -hmm. So I lived in the radio station mm -hmm. and I studied all aspects of it. Like many people think in radio that you come in, you do a four hour shift, turn the on button, talk, play music, turn it off and leave. Please, mm -hmm. no. It is a full time 24 seven. I and believe that. Snow, snow days and weather challenges, who's expected to still be there? TV mm -hmm. and radio. Mm -hmm. um, I had to learn the sales side because I was on the programming side. I was an on-air personality. Mm -hmm. you know, they, they are literally separated in the building. So you could do your own la-la land and just worry about your shift, but that wouldn't help the station. Mm -hmm. It helped my Black community that this was the only mm -hmm. R&B radio station for. So I had to go learn the sales side. I had mm -hmm. to learn the promo side. I had mm -hmm. to learn how to put the tin up myself in case the promo folks called off. Wow. Or they were, or they were running late. I need to learn A lot of things you don't think about, yeah. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. what are the giveaways? And do you have to have a waiver? And how to, how to put together an event? Mm -hmm. How do you put together a multi-sensory event on a budget? Because you can't blow your budget on one event. Not if right. you've got to plan them all season, right? Mm -hmm. And so I learned all those aspects, which I think helped me be a successful broadcaster. Um, and then I took chances that don't feel like chances. And that's when you know you're operating in your truth, right? Because I would do things like we would have inventory. So I would play the public service announcement mm -hmm. um, from the National Account Council. So, you know, those little announcements we used to grow up on about seatbelts, yes. about Latter-day Saints, about uh -huh. smoking cessation. Okay. So you get those all like the an after time. school special something. Yeah. <laughs> you get those all the time as a radio broadcaster. And they will beg you basically, if you have commercial inventory that's not sold, so six thirty or sixty second commercials, then mm -hmm. pop these in there. That's all that's their ask. Mm -hmm. So no problem to me, right? I would listen to the messages I thought resonated to our touch listeners. I would play those. But then when you feel empowered and you mm -hmm. know you have a purpose, then you start to take chances. So my thing was, are you serious? There's people like Art Williams, who was like the highest ranking black HIV doctor in the Commonwealth, who was working at Hamilton Health. Really? So I saw him and was like, Art, are you interested in coming and writing some PSAs around sexually transmitted diseases, the mm -hmm. zip code? He had the data. So we got in the studio and wrote PSAs that were specifically about central Pennsylvania. Nice. And that nice. were about zip codes and protect yourself and STIs and STDs. Mm -hmm. You know, we did stuff about domestic violence and sexual assault. Mm -hmm. He was one of the first people I know who talked about intimate partner violence with mm. that realization that every perpetrator isn't a male, every victim isn't female. Right. Males can be victims of domestic violence and sexual assault too. He was one of the first ones who, who said that information. So to me, that's a no-brainer. I have the decision-making power to put a, voices on the air. Mm -hmm. He's got crucial information where he's the subject matter expert. Oh, we got to work this out. Yeah, and that's yeah. where one of my first awards came from, from the Pennsylvania okay. Associations of Broadcasters, was for the work we were doing with public service announcements and the work that Nate Gaston, um, and Olin Harris were doing mm -hmm. like gospel cavalcade and mm -hmm. the, the public broadcasting show, but it was just making decisions like that. No, I'm not running the you know the whole station cluster, Wink 104, and all those. No, I'm not the market manager. I'm not mm -hmm. the regional manager, but I was the program director. And the fact that essentially to them it was the little black station that they inherited. Mm -hmm. so they ran the life out of it from Martin Luther King holiday until the end of February. Uh, <laughs> I had to have the knowledge and study them and know that. Now, what we knew was we black every day, 24 mm seven. -hmm. And so mm -hmm. we don't need to shame advertisers into dropping their money in this two, two and a half month window. Mm -hmm. Let's spread it out over 12 months mm -hmm. or let's go unapologetically unapolog go ask Eddie Ruth one of the best, most successful entrepreneurs in Harrisburg, he made a killing off of sponsoring the weather. 
He wow. said the Tom Joyner morning show weather that mm -hmm. was local. So he was getting all these mentions and morning drive and afternoon drive when you have the, mm -hmm. the highest listening audience. And he was branding Eddie's the clothing store, Eddie's the furniture store. Mm. Genius. Yeah, it is. What people don't know now, the fact that, that Harrisburg does not have a, a black owned, black run station, that hurts. That's not just about, oh, we can't get concerts in the Giant Center or the Forum. That mm. is about black businesses suffer because that should yeah. be an outlet where black businesses can learn how to do their marketing budget and they can learn let me allocate 25 percent of it to radio and then let me figure out what part of radio works the best maybe you have a product that works that white men are going to buy then you need to be on the rock station mm -hmm. i get that you're a black owned business but if your product would sell better if you have a product that works for top 40 you need to go advertise on wink 104. leveraging yeah. absolutely mm-hmm but 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 the the relationship may be the salesperson needed to woo this black business owner who mm -hmm. then makes that decision. And that's the difference between because it wasn't owned by us, they didn't love it the way listeners right. loved it. Exactly. Right? I understand exactly what you're saying. Yeah. And as a program director, it was just challenging. I mean, they gave me five hundred dollars to do touch day in the park. Now think about that. Wow. You can't charge an entrance fee for it, mm -hmm. right? Because it's a public park. Mm -hmm. We all know a DJ can ask for that for two hours of spinning. Exactly, that's the money right there. And so you wanted me to plan a full day of activities with a live DJ for mm -hmm. $500, mm -hmm. but you're charging Giant Foods at the time a, a sponsorship of $1,500 mm -hmm. and you're just pocketing that. That was the systemic racism mm -hmm. of no, 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 no. Okay, for every three sponsorships, then I should be getting more money for my budget. Because mm -hmm. what the decision they were saying is, well, you just go ask those people to perform. It's exposure. Exactly. But we're always asked to perform. Mm -hmm. I need to be able to pay people for their talent or mm -hmm. at least give a consistent love offer offering that covers their, their wardrobe. <laughs> Mm -hmm. That covers their practicing. Because you know how we do. We're not going to come half butt. We're going right. to come. <laughs> and we probably spent more money than the love offering was going to put in our pocket. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I refuse to do that. So I think I did it two years. And then I went to them because I was starting to get stronger and like, you know, wanting to advocate. And I was just like, this is ridiculous. You're not going to keep selling sponsorships to these you know, big corporate organizations and I still only have $500 to pay. Because at that right. point, I'm trying to make sure DJ Red does a, a spin that um, um, Corley, um, DJ Godfather. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, you know, all the DJs, um, DJ Galen Allen from Kamaja. I mean, I knew the black DJs, so I'm like, this is their day to shine because it's not just about spinning for the touch. It's about this now becomes a marketing tool for them uh -huh. to get the church fish fry, somebody's 50th birthday, somebody's uh -huh. baby shower, right? Because this is their trade. They are out exactly. there learning. And so I went to them and I did a whole proposal, them meaning the management of Cumulus Media, the, the radio station. Uh -huh. and, they, and then they went, okay, well, we'll just pull it. So they thought they were calling my bluff. But at that time, I'm like, you're dealing with a different kind of woman now. Right. right? The community didn't get all that information. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the rumor mill starts to spin about all kinds of crazy things. But that's what went down. The fact that you're not just going to keep feeding me $500 mm -hmm. to plan an entire day. I'm giving you reasons why we need to have a consistent love offering or I need a budget for talent. I need a budget for the DJ. I need a budget for vendors or, mm -hmm. you know, or nonprofits or something. Mm -hmm. And you tell me no, because you want a larger profit margin. Not on my watch, we're not. And so it's those decisions that we, we, we love on people who get in positions of power, but we never quite know what they're going through, mm -hmm. you know? Yes. there by myself like that was hard and so mm -hmm. were the program directors before me you know Iaya Isoki was the first black female program director before her was Ron Mr. Wizard Spain they mm -hmm. all went through those pains of it's like 
okay, do your job. Just keep us out of scandal. Keep 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 the touch off our plate. That's mm-hmm. a much different mindset than let us invest in this. Let us make it world class. Let it watch it grow. Yeah. Watch it grow. Mm-hmm. You know, be mindful that mayors were still coming in there to cut their commercials. Political candidates were still coming in there. And I was that person, you know, for that almost five years who was cutting their promos. Mm-hmm. And at one point there was two huge speakers and the the cover of one of them had fallen off or something. And I kept putting in requests, fix this, fix this. And mm-hmm. literally the engineer came in, ripped it off and said, now they match. Wow. wow. And that was about a month before I was, you know, terminated and released. You know, uh-huh. but w- would they do that to anyone other than a woman of color? Mm. No. No. And so how do I prove that? We already know. That's too difficult. But is that part of my lived experience? Absolutely. Exactly. Being mm. a professional, I was in my late 20s. I had had a master's degree since I was 25. Mm-hmm. The market manager at the time had graduated high school, did not even have an undergraduate degree. Wow. So all these dynamics are Mm -hmm. happening at the same time. That's our lived experience. So many behind the scenes aspects. Yeah. I'm telling you, that's why it's both, you know, at this point in my early 40s and where I am now, I have to honor lived experience and learn. So Mm -hmm. yes, credentials can have a place. And credentials can open some doors, but I will never be one of those people who's like, it's only the credential. Because I know, you know, lived experience. Look at our entrepreneurs. You know, an earned credential doesn't necessarily mean you're a successful entrepreneur. You got to have hunger. You have to have Mm -hmm. You got to network. You have to be okay with the word no consistently. Mm -hmm. Those are different skill sets than being able to do group discussions, group projects, <laughs> um, do APA style. True, you know? true, true. Uh-huh. The people who can do both are amazing. The Cornell West, Michael Eric Dyson, you know, just different folks who learn how to blend or as Maya Angelou says, translate mm-hmm. you know, those worlds. And I think that, um, I know we'll talk to it a little bit later, but that's definitely one of my goals in my life is, is to become a really good translator. To be able to be an activist who can bridge with academia, to be a facilitator who can take really complicated models and theories and bring them things down to like, when I leave you, I have something tangible Mm -hmm. that I can do. You can't talk about all these isms and phobias and just leave me there. But Mm -hmm. if you bridge and say, okay, isms and phobias, and one of the things you can do is take the R word out your vocabulary so that you're not offending a person with a cognitive disability. Mm-hmm. Now you can start to marinate on that. You can start to say, oh, ableism, right? So mm-hmm. prejudice against people with disabilities plus the misuse of institutional power. Okay, that's the big thing. On this level, oh, there that used to be said with hate. And now yeah. uh-huh. and they used to lock people up against their will when mm-hmm. they were using that word. Oh, that's a reason why I should take it out my vocabulary. And because I, I don't even really mean it when I use it. Mm-hmm. Right. And mm-hmm. so we, but we got to be able to connect it. And that's really one of my life goals is to be a translator, to be able okay. to say, yes, activists, we need to march and honk and boycott and do all those things. But also some spaces that's not going to work. Mm-hmm. That may be in the relationships I build, or it may be in the research study that I help produce. So then we can back up what people have known to be true for 20, 30, 40 years. But some people just won't freaking believe it until they see it in some numbers or in a report. So it's so put in their face vote. directly. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. See, we got a couple people joined in. I see Steve's on. It says, good to see you. Thank you for tuning in. Please tag, like, and share. Shashan uh, from Jason Brown. Um, when we're able to travel, I love to check the campus with my youngest daughter. It's only 90, mi- 90, 90 minutes away from where he's at. Jason Brown is in Missouri also. He wants to check the campus out. Shashan, yeah, uh, I'm say Steve. hello, because I believe oh. that is the Jason Brown that I was at ship with. Yes, it is. It is. 
who who is yeah. also let me I got he had he got got a shout out for no shade all like he's one of the co-authors in that thing. <laughs> and I will be purchasing that tonight because okay. I don't have that in my library. So I make that commitment in front of everybody that I will be purchasing the books for sure. Um, and I definitely honor that King. I mean, amazing, mm-hmm. consistent. What a, a story of representation, not only in his family as a beautiful mm-hmm. family man, in his fraternity as a beautiful you know, man with purpose and vision, but also like the number of classes, cohorts that he brought in through Enterprise. Oh, yeah. Where they saw this motivational, smooth, relationship building, wickedly smart black man. Who's a Every translator himself. LinkedIn, when he posted, oh, this is the new cohort or class of Enterprise. I'm like, who's been guiding them through that journey? Uh-huh. A black man. Like that's what's so exciting <laughs> about that. And the fact that we were all running around that Shippensburg campus, some undergrads, I was a commuting master student, but you know, the bonds that we created there mm-hmm. of just trying to do something different, of wanting to be the best at it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, for even, you know, there, I can never speak ill of the divine nine because there's only nine of us. Mm-hmm. So yes, I'm part of Sigma Gamma Rho Sorority Incorporated. I will rock it. I will never knock the other sororities Mm -hmm. because we got a connection, Mm -hmm. right? And we were born because we weren't allowed to join the other one. Right. So when people get into like beef, like between the nine, I'm like, you're missing the bigger picture here, Mm -hmm. which is there's only nine of us. So sometimes I think people need to step back and just say, at the end of the day, where are we connected? Mm-hmm. And absolutely, we have differences, right? Um, and I always use people of color to teach. It's the most fundamental one I know. I rarely ever say people of color and don't define it. Mm-hmm. When I say people of color, I will say, you know, indigenous as a Native American, Mexican American, um, African, Black, Caribbean, Latinx, you know, Hispanic, Asian Pacific Islander, Middle Eastern diaspora, biracial and multiracial. Now, why do I extend the breath to do that? Because in the U.S. context, when we say people of color, people think black and white. Mm-hmm. So we leave out a whole bunch of other people and a whole bunch of other experiences. And the mm-hmm. truth is we outweigh, we have the bigger number. Mm-hmm. There are more people of color globally than there are white people. But you don't know that because of the systems of power and hierarchy. Mm-hmm. So if we don't start talking like people of color and list all that and then say, now, absolutely, we need sacred space. There's sometimes black people just need to be with black people. That Latin people just need to be with Latin X, you know, Hispanic people, Asian Pacific (laughs) Islanders. But it's and both. We need sacred space and we all need to come together because we're going through similar oppression. We have similar stories of victory and success. Mm-hmm. But if we're not spending time, then I don't know how to support my sisters from the Middle East. You know, I can never say that I am biracial or multiracial. Mm-hmm. So I can never tell those individuals how to define themselves. What I can mm-hmm. do is be an ally, right? And I can say, okay, well, what you tell me is your truth is your truth. Now, if they're in environments where maybe nobody is saying, well, you have a lot of melanin, You have a darker complexion, so though you may identify this way, you will always be perceived that way. Okay, that's a nugget of wisdom that I'm dropping. I still can't tell them how to define themselves. There's something I'll never be. Mm -hmm. And so we got to have more of those discussions to say, this is how I'm being an ally to you. This is how I witness your story. This is how I support and advocate for you. And then that's what you do for me too. And when we do that, We are stronger. That really is coalition building, community building Mm -hmm. um, to a whole nother level. And it's a lot of work. It's not easy because anti-Latinus runs through everywhere, right? We got Mm -hmm. Latin sisters and brothers, Asian Pacific Islanders who who have drank that Kool-Aid too. Mm -hmm. We have refugees and immigrants who have drank that American dream Kool-Aid. And so they look down on Black folks. Mm -hmm. We got African and, you know, African-American tension. Mm-hmm. So we got to be in space a, a very real thing, yeah. to start to talk through that 
so we can educate ourselves because mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's divide and conquer. But we got to be smarter than divide and conquer. Since a house divided cannot stand. You, you cannot touched stand. on a lot of key points. You did. You did. I see Clarence is on. Thank you for tuning in. Please tag, like, and share. Arlene's on. Thank you for tuning in. Victoria's on. Thank you for tuning in. Safari says she's glad she's tuned in. It's a good interview. Uh, Aaron liked the DJ talk. I hear you. I hear you. Uh, Warren, again, uh, too powerful. Told you she's amazing is what he's telling. Absolutely. <laughs> And you've touched on so many key points. I know uh, we were talking about uh, public speaking and you talked about 1400 to touch and some of the awards that you got there. But um, what one, one question I wanted to ask was uh, voiceovers. How often and have you done that? And what exactly have you done that for? Oh, well, I appreciate it because I'm going to put it in the universe on your show is that, you know, that is the part of my business that I want to blow up. Okay. Right? That, that is the want to do it now so I can re mm -hmm. retire early Okay. <laughs> um, part of boisterous media uh -huh. because um, it's fun. It's fun. I mean, it, it is a craft though. You have mm -hmm. to, I mean, I, I, I believe that with Leonard Dozier. So for those who don't know, Leonard Dozier is an amazing, he has ties to Harrisburg, um, amazing voiceover artist, And he did clinics for many, many years in Harrisburg. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you have to have breathing. You have to have mm -hmm. techniques of an actor. You have to have discipline. You got to read the copy that you're given and figure out where you put the emphasis. So, you know, it's not just like, oh, you have a unique voice, get up, roll out of bed, and then spit mm -hmm. a voiceover. No. Um, and, you know, increasingly they're using celebrities for a lot of it. So the competition's even stronger. Right. You know, you can close your eyes and hear, um, I mean, Meghan Markle, who married Harry, just voiced over some elephant movie. Um, you know, folks like, um, of course, James Earl Jones is one. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, but there's lots of actors I now. saw Pete he, Diddy, he, he did one on Audible now. He, he read a yeah. book for Audible. Yeah, oh. Lena Waithe is doing AT&T commercial. Hmm. The sister who produced um, Boomerang and Sisters for, for BET. Okay. Every time AT&T comes on, that's her voice. So I'm never mad because that means a multiple stream of income for them. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm yeah. just like, I need to get my little niche <laughs> in the game uh -huh. so that that is one of those multiple streams of income for me. Um, gotcha. But I've been blessed. I think the, I'm trying to think the last project I did, I voiced over an info, infographic about um, housing and homelessness and mm. domestic violence and sexual assault for mm -hmm. the Pennsylvania uh, Coalition Against Domestic Violence. Mm -hmm. So I did some work for them. Um, I'm trying to think, but that's, that's definitely the area that I want to grow. That's where you're gravitating um, towards, I understand. Yeah, because yeah. there's just so much. I mean, there's audio books, there's, um, mm -hmm. you know, the many of us could be at full-time jobs where you do online module training. Mm -hmm. Someone was paid to be the voiceover for that. Um, and so, and, and every voice isn't great at everything. Like, I'm mm -hmm. not a voice actor. I don't have a huge range. I don't have a bunch of different voices. Those are true voice actors. Okay. Um, I'm more of a voice over so I can narrate, I can mm -hmm. do audio, mm -hmm. um, those pieces. So again, it comes from study. You know, I, I definitely need to network more in the industry itself mm -hmm. and get my name out there. And of course you have to have the infrastructure. You got to be able to turn product around. So whether that's a home studio or you connect with a studio in your local community and they know, hey, if I get a gig, I got to be right. in there and be able to turn it around in 48 to 72 hours. So right. Most people want their, their product. If you can create that, then you're halfway there. And like now that I moved, I got to figure that out in Missouri of like, because I don't have a home studio yet, mm -hmm. but you, who can I partner with where maybe they cut me some slack on the hourly rate. And then if I get gigs, I can go in, fit, produce, and send that, you know, to the to the client. Gotcha, gotcha. Absolutely. And you talked about uh, your poetry books and your CD voicemail uh, that you did with Mad Flavor Productions. You want to you want to elaborate on that a little a little bit more? Sure. So that again was my first baby. It was released January of two thousand ten. So okay. again, shout out to Warren Ritter. Um, definitely shout out to Jay um, Jeff Jalen Lindsay. So mm -hmm. it was amazing. Like it definitely was, I think it was 
I was uh, adjunct teaching. This was post the touch. So again, I had been front row at many people's book releases. I was a regular at poetry night at the St. Moritz, um, eating those jumbo fried wings and french fries <laughs> on uh -huh. Tuesday night. Um, and I was performing up and down the East Coast. You know, it, it an amazing time. I mean, I tell people when I moved to Harrisburg, it was fall of 99 or spring of 2000 and it literally was Love Jones the movie mm -hmm. like I experienced it in Harrisburg Pennsylvania because we had St. Moritz we had the uptown almost poetry cartel which was at the um, they were at the state museum and then they moved to what became later the bookstore um, mm -hmm. you had Sister Latifah who had her shop on third street and we had Sister Art, which was a women, women of color collective. We had artists, choreographers, stained glass makers. Um, and we would come together at least once a month and just mm -hmm. have sacred space. We ended up writing an original poem that we did at the theater there that's in the bottom of the Hilton. Mm -hmm. um, we, uh, Strawberry Square, like we ended up doing a full production there. Like what? Like a whole production of women <laughs> from original content, uh -huh. um, and then I was part of a you know poetry street jam, which again was a group of poets um, who came together. Um, Anthony LB, um, Jonathan Branham, uh, uh, G G Mill. There was a whole bunch of amazing poets, and mm -hmm. we came together with our poetry, found themes, and so the whole play was actually our different poetry pieces. Okay. And we put that on there. So, you know, just the, the amazingness of that. And now there's an actually Black-owned, Black-run theater group, Sankofa Theater Group that's there. So okay. there's progress being made. It's just our people, again, making the intentional decisions to support it. And then on a structural level is big business funding it. Mm -hmm. Right, but I know that they did um, the Intazaki Shange play of women who consider suicide. They did that. They did Akila and the Bee. So that's a black owned, black run theater group right there in the capital city as a show. Right. And look, look at all that creativity right there that you just mentioned, too. Absolutely. I mean, and just the, the, the black owned business stuff that's in the bird, mm -hmm. you know, I, I miss, I miss my people. I always mm -hmm. say that it was time for me to go. I needed to challenge myself. I needed to do it because I didn't want to be resentful or bitter and be that woman. Yeah. We all know it. We all got one person in our circle. <laughs> I was great. And I, you know, and then you kind of be like, but why didn't you ever take chances or uh, yeah. why didn't you leave and try? You can always come back. So I didn't mm -hmm. want to be that person. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I, I just didn't want to be that person. And so, but I miss the people and I miss the businesses. Like right. the, the fact for the last, I'd say five years strong, black folks who have full-time jobs and businesses and the hustle and the work ethic that's there and the, the inkling to buy black and brown and support black and brown, you know, there's a group on Facebook. I, I was so programmed to go there when I needed a carpet cleaner or a plumber or a mobile notary. Oh, so many different I things, yeah. There and uh -huh. say, okay, let's go, drop the name. And people did that for me and I got business. I gave mm -hmm. other people business because mm -hmm. of that. So, you know, the Leland Nelsons, um, the Candace Coleman, the Madonna Awatwees, the mm -hmm. Julia Mallory's, um, all of them, mm -hmm. you know, that is amazing. That's not happening everywhere. It should. And when mm -hmm. we can get it happening on a systemic level, which black and brown women are starting micro and small businesses faster than anybody else, mm -hmm. there is a trend there. Mm -hmm. At the same time with COVID, who was basically left out of a lot of these federal funding streams, micro and small business, because mm -hmm. we may or may not have a relationship with a bank. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't employ anybody. So I didn't go chase any of that COVID money and transparency because I was like, I have a full-time job. Mm -hmm. You know, this is my baby. I continue to grow on the side. So uh -huh. no, I'm not making money. I'm going to make less money in Boisterous this year than I did last year. Right. So I didn't go for that because I know that there are some small businesses that literally employ people and they were trying to tap into this money so they could not lay people off. But right. on a systemic level, 
they, you know, Nancy Pelosi and the rest of them went back and fought for more money mm-hmm. because that first pot of money went for the folks who have 20, 30 year relationships with banks. And they had a lawyer on site that they could say, hey, go read through these federal regulations that we can't make sense of. Mm-hmm. And they're interpreting them differently every other day. Um, and then come back and tell us how to fill out our application. And when they made the call, they got the appointment. Right. There's a whole bunch of black and brown businesses that made calls and nobody was returning their call. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's weighing space for both of those too. Mm-hmm. And I know like, you talked about COVID and how um, uh, Voiceless Media is, is, and all, all small businesses are taking a hit right now on, on some, at some level or, or another. But what events did you already, would you like to share with us that you've already put on uh, in years past? And, and maybe what events are you looking forward to putting on in the future since maybe some of them are either canceled or postponed that are, uh, you may have currently had scheduled? Oh, okay. Um, well, definitely. I mean, I want to shout out folks like, you know, Jametta Colson, mm-hmm. um, who, you know, brought me back to Harrisburg because I had moved, but brought me back. Um, right. For... We attended that. That We just talked about that off camera that yeah, back in October. Absolutely. Yep. Um, for, you know, for the, the annual conference of, I always get the letters wrong, like D- DIPCA. So Diversity and Inclusion Professionals of Central PA. Uh-huh. Um, you know, folks like that, who she saw me, I did a facilitation for the Harrisburg Chamber of Commerce. She was in the audience. She had gone to school with Charlie White Jr. Okay. And uh-huh. they knew each other. Charlie and I were working at the city of Harrisburg together at the time. Mm-hmm. He was um, the director of business development. And I was serving as the director of diversity and equity. And he introduced us. Mm -hmm. She saw me facilitate and said, I'm going to get you booked for something. And when I tell you that sister kept her word and got Uh me booked for multiple something, literally she single-handedly booked me for three different gigs, something at the Hershey Museum, that particular conference where you and I met in October. Uh So this is the fruit, right, from the seeds that she planted then. Gotcha. Yes, it is. Um, It sure is. Yeah. So, I mean, definitely events like that, that are spaces where people know they're bringing you to it, or they just say, hey, here's an opportunity to go for this. You know, mm-hmm. shout out to Yolanda Edrington. You know, that's who sent me an email and said, hey, Pennsylvania Coalition Against Rape and the National uh, Sexual Violence Resource Center has a, a, a bid for proposal out. Mm-hmm. And we're looking for a racial justice consultant to come in and provide workshops and trainings for a year. I knew of it, but mm-hmm. by, by that sister taking the time to email me to say, put your hat in the ring, put something together, that made me do it, right? right. And uh-huh. again, the work I have to do is I shouldn't need that, but the gratitude I give to her and the universe is that that was that extra little, come on, sis, go ahead, mm-hmm. girl, you can do it. I believe mm-hmm. in you. Because what if I didn't know she looked at me that way? Mm-hmm. There's lots of people who know what I did, mm-hmm. but paying money, something different. Lots of people in Harrisburg knew I was a poet. When I got to that level of I started saying, sure, I'll do a poem. It will be this fee. Mm-hmm. The request dropped by 75%. Oh, wow. Because most people will love something for free <laughs> or they loved me for free. They yes. didn't like me enough to pay me. Mm-hmm. And that was a painful lesson because I had to be okay with that, right? Kind of network mm-hmm. marketing. I had to get okay with the no. I mm-hmm. had to get okay because if I didn't value myself, if I didn't know that I'm definitely worth $75 at a minimum for an hour, mm-hmm. because you're just thinking the hour I show up and spit a poem. What they don't know is my travel time to and from, mm-hmm. the time, if it was an original poem, the time mm-hmm. I pinned to create this original poem. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like all yeah, the yeah. things that go into it. Like so many different things. variables just to, to go in to produce that one event. Yes. You mm-hmm. know, like, you know, I do I do one pro bono thing a month and that was how I got in that habit. So a, a tip I will share that I know a lot of entrepreneurs, especially who do a consulting business, mm-hmm. it is so difficult to make that leap. they will be like, what do you mean? I said yes to everything because I wanted exposure. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to hurt people. I'll say, okay. My tip is you do one pro bono thing a month. So the first person that gets to you, they have booked your pro bono thing that month. 
So then when the requests come and people want something for free, you say, oh my goodness, I would love to, but I've already booked my pro bono for the month. So what kind of budget can you even come up with? What can you work with? The more you do that, as you know, as a mind and a body coach, is that you train that muscle. Yes. Now you're more comfortable saying, well, I'll give you a free hour of consulting to talk about it. And then after that, it's going to cost you. Or exactly. here's my total fee, mm-hmm. go back, have a tough conversation on your side, come back and let me know mm-hmm. what's feasible, right? right? If I knew they were coming legitimately back at me with a small budget, I would make it work. But the problem is most of the time we accept the crumbs and we haven't even asked. There's a full cake. Oh yeah, like Thanksgiving dinner right, right there waiting for you. Waiting. <laughs> But we have to train the muscle because I was absolutely a yes person. Yes, I'll do it. Yes, yes, yes. I didn't even want to do it. And I'd be like, mm-hmm. yeah, I'll be there, you know, to give a poem or do this or MC this for free. I'm a heck of an MC. I do my homework. I come with prepped material. Mm-hmm. I engage the audience. Mm-hmm. I'm going to dress in colors of the event if, or I'm addressing all black if they don't want me to be seen. Like I, right. I'm going to put out any fires. I'm going to try to make this thing look seamless no matter what's going on. Mm-hmm. That is an investment. And if you can't invest in me to do that, then I'm not the one for you. And right. most people, it's because they haven't done it. When mm-hmm. you do it really well, then they think, oh, that's just her personality. And, or, you, and you make it look easy as in it could be done just right there on a whim. That's work. Mm-hmm. Work, right? And Mm so, you know, just like this, for people who don't know behind the scenes, there's about seven or eight steps you do to get prepared for one show, correct? Oh, you're absolutely right. It's some days it's an all day process, but at least an hour before, then we do the show and at least an hour afterward, yes. And then isn't there paperwork that happens before? Oh, there's, oh there's my God, there's paperwork that needs to be sent out months and mo- weeks at a time. Uh, there's fo- photos, follow-up flyers, so many different things, qu- quotes. I-, I can go on and on. Yes, you're absolutely right. Exactly. So Packages well, being delivered, so many different things. Right. So, you know, again, that's an individual level is that we all need to go, oh, let me not just be okay with the surface level. Mm-hmm. When I see somebody who's successful, let me not think that that success is overnight. Let me give them the benefit of the doubt that they put in the 10,000 hours needed. 10,000 hours. That success like that. to show up. That's an I'm glad Will said that in the book. Absolutely. Because, <laughs> you know, we'll, that's when the haterade or people do crabs in a barrel. Well, that's where that comes from mm-hmm. because people don't know the story. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think, you know, you had, you would ask me before, you know, what inspires me? I'm inspired by people's stories. Mm. I, I, I really believe one of my missions, and I'm trying to figure out like how to put this into boisterous, is that I am a documenter of history. Okay. I was that person in my friend group who's always behind the camera. Mm-hmm. My flash drive, I have documented the friendships I have of three to 20 years in pictures. I'm that wow. one. I turn the go back and see the evolution. Yeah, into the, mm-hmm. the ordinary, into the extraordinary. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm there. So because I think if we don't celebrate us, if we don't document us, no one else is, or if mm-hmm. they do, they only pick the stories that are interesting to them. Mm-hmm. But the stories that may be interesting to you and I are different because right. our black isn't monolithic. Right, our Latin ex sisters and brothers and non binary folks isn't monolithic, and that's half of it. I like that. I was gonna say, our narratives are different, yeah, they're different. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, don't get me wrong, like, I there's definitely a place for stories. I know I love Love Jones because that was like a middle middle social economic class story. Mm -hmm. Because my reality is, I I can't relate to the hood story. I didn't Mm -hmm. grow up in the hood. Mm -hmm. You know, my parents, both first generation, got college degrees, Mm -hmm. got graduate degrees. So, yes, I grew up with some social economic privilege. I grew up not saying if I was going to go to college, but when. When, uh So, I carry those things with me all the time. So, at the same time, I don't always want to see a hood flick all the time because. I don't relate to that. Right. Love Jones, I related to this sister who had a talent, but everybody in her life is like, you better go get this good job and work this good mm-hmm. job. But she's inspired by, you know, the pictures of, um, is it Wendell Brooks? 
and and she's wondering, do I have enough to to launch on my own? You got mm-hmm. this brother who's a bomb poet and a writer, mm-hmm. but he hasn't put his first book out yet because he hasn't just decided. Not down a foot, yeah, exactly. Makes this his craft, uh-huh. right? So I related to both of that. I related to their dating. I related to the friend in your ear, you know, who who's pivotal in that movie, who tells her, tell him you're gonna go see your ex. And if he acts a fool, you don't need to go. But if he acts calm, then go. What? Mm-hmm. We're playing <laughs> games like that. So we all have a friend in our circle who gives us horrible advice yes. in a moment where we need really good advice. Mm-hmm. So that was real. I could relate to that. So we need more of our narratives, more of our stories out there to keep showing. Because we may even say we're not all monolithic but the images of us are, and especially mm-hmm. when you go abroad, all they do is give you hip hop. All they do is give you Tupac and Biggie. Those uh, are legends. They have uh, a place, but so is Toni Morrison. You mm-hmm. know, so is, um, I was just reading and I got to Google a name that there was a black queer person who refused to give up their seat on the bus before Rosa Parks ever did. Mm. Wow, like, interesting. Huh? <laughs> And that doesn't take away from Rosa, uh-huh. right? Because we get it. Rosa was doing the work. She was doing domestic violence, sexual assault. She was um, registering people to vote in the NAACP. So mm-hmm. I get it. But we will act like no one ever was doing any resistance before her. Mm-hmm. There were. They just were people who had other marginalized identities. Mm-hmm. So folks were like, eh, get out the way because you're already too controversial. You ain't going to help our community struggle Mm -hmm. because you're gay or you have a disability or whatever it may be Mm -hmm. and so what about those stories right what about Mm -hmm. those narratives and so I know that's a a big reason why I was put on this earth and so I want to do more of that because I want to you know I've always loved VH1 behind the music Mm -hmm. Um, I've always loved unsung right all these shows that tell you the story, the story, right. The, art, the uh-huh. story of the people. Because I struggle with that. I struggle with the how. How do I get from A to B? If I can't see it right now, how do I get there? Where mm-hmm. a piece of that is faith, another piece is just saying, put one foot in front of the and other. The other. Right. Right? But the uh-huh. more you hear it, the more you see it, then the more you go, okay. If you do it and you're not even thinking about it. And so, yeah, like I'm just inspired by people who go chase their dreams and get it done. People who build anything, build businesses, build relationships. I mean, you know, I'm inspired by my creators. parents who've been married 45 years. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it, it is something to you. You know, I'm, I'm now a divorced person. Um, never thought I'd be part of that statistic. I mm-hmm. am. So the fact that like, now, when I see these marriages, I have even more respect for them mm-hmm. because yeah. I know each of them has a story. Oh, yeah. So, the ups and downs through it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh-huh. And, and that's hard because mm-hmm. how you ask people to tell you your intimate things. And at the same time, I feel like more married people should be talking about marriages or giving advice about marriages because I you totally don't agree. Know what you don't know, and we're you sold seeing the the icing, but you don't see the whole cake. Yeah, if you saw the whole cake, cake, you would know it's layers and that heat and that, that process is good, bad, and indifferent. If you you knew so many different layers of that, you would understand the icing is a little bit more sweeter when you know what the insides packed with. Big king, that's what mm-hmm. I'm saying, right? Like mm-hmm. out here doing amazing things. You know, parents, parenthood. There needs to be more discussions about parenthood, the tangible stuff. The uh-huh. folks who had absentee parents, how do you do something that you didn't see or get? Mm, exactly. Like, that's a big, broad question. Uh-huh. Now, there's folks out here doing it and doing it lovely, mm-hmm. but how, can they articulate that? And will you listen? Yeah. That's the stuff that inspires me. I see. I see. Your passion's coming through. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Mm -hmm. I see. Yes. And we, we talked about inspiration and goals. Um, uh, we touched on goals lightly, but my, this is my favorite question. I want to jump to this question right here. And I talked about this question uh, uh, while we were off camera a little bit. It gave you a little background for it, that I was a coach for a midget football for about seven years. And I uh, the, the uh, kids that I coach, I would always not just football, but I tried to it, life skills and bettering yourself. And with that, I would always tell them to read something like, hey, I don't care if it was a comic book. I don't care if it was a magazine. I don't care if it was a newspaper article. I don't care if it was a chapter book, just something that you, they were interested in. So find yeah, something yeah. that they were interested in because it's a lot easier to read something if you like it. And not only like you work out your muscles, you work out your brain muscles when you read. It helps you with thinking process. It helps you with grammar. It helps you with enunciation. It helps you dramatically. So many important tips with reading. So I would always instill, ask them to read something, not to, not caring what it was. And you know how it is. It's kind of like when coaches or parents or someone of authority starts preaching over and over again, it falls on deaf ears. So this is my favorite question I like to ask. So they get a different perspective from somebody else on how important it is to read and what your favorite book is and why. Did it did it inspire you? Did it change you? Was it educational? What what what, what can you can you help us out? Can you share what your favorite book is and why? Sure. Um, and so I'm, you know, I'm gonna bust the binary a little bit. I'm gonna give you two answers, right? Okay. Um, so on any given day, my favorite book is the book I'm reading right now. Okay, what's that? Right. Mm -hmm. um, because for two things, one, it's the discipline. Like that's a choice. I can easily sit in front of a TV and and binge and veg out mm -hmm, mm -hmm. between Netflix, Hulu, mm -hmm. just googling stuff. You know, TED Talk, like. <laughs> I can keep myself very busy through media. So and every time, time flies I just like that. in a book, right? Mm -hmm. That is a journey and that mm -hmm. is a choice. I'm going to mm -hmm. read instead of watch. Mm -hmm. um, then every time I finish one, that is like an accomplishment. Satisfying feeling. Yeah, it is. Yes, because I could have quit. Mm -hmm. At any point, I could have quit. Mm -hmm. So, the, you know, whatever book I'm reading at that time. So literally, let's see, today is Monday. Mm -hmm. So Saturday into Sunday at like 2 a.m., I finished reading this book. Okay. Which is called Eloquent Rage. Uh-huh. And it says, A Black Feminist Discovered Through Superpower by Brittany Cooper. This sister is amazing. Okay. Like, raised in the South. Um talks about going to get like formal education she went to howard university mm -hmm. columbia university has a phd but when i tell you this book is amazing because mm -hmm. of her personal journey and through that she's doing what we were just talking about the translating she's uh -huh. connecting sexism and her experiences in the black church okay sexism and her experience dating black men or being mm -hmm. in academia higher education mm -hmm. with black men she talks about patriarchy and how that shows up when she was working in political campaigns. Mm. Um, you know, she talks about interracial friendships. So her, her, you know, friendships with white women and how that has been challenging. And then she connected it to the 2016 election mm. that Hillary Clinton lost, mm -hmm. right? To the Cheeto who's in the White House right now. Mm -hmm. So it is amazing because in it, she literally talks about discovering her superpower, which hmm. is being a black woman in the U.S. Okay. And having to introspect and reflect and think. And it has humor. She is funny. <laughs> she is um, opinionated. Like there are four letter cuss words in here. You know, okay. sometimes people get intimidated by reading. Mm -hmm. um, but no, I'll tell she you, I read this book. Before that, this was part of my PhD reading. Uh -huh. um, and and literally each one of these is when I had to Google a vocabulary word. Wow, okay. Right? So <laughs> you got a lot of tabs was, there. Yeah. So this was challenging because the writer of this, the vocabulary is off the chart. There okay. were terms of, you know, um, I'm trying to remember like necro political, which was about the counting of black bodies as a political message mm -hmm. out of slavery. Like what? So, I mean, I Googled so much about this, but this one is about um, having to navigate slavery. And so how people passed socioeconomically, how people passed racially and how mm -hmm. people passed gender. 
Hmm. So basically how people were trying to escape slavery mm -hmm. by, you know, certain people, if they were fair enough, they tried to pass as white. If not, mm -hmm. they might, a couple, a husband and wife may have tried to pass as slave master and slave hmm. to get out of right, right. bondage. Uh -huh. so some men dressed up as women to get out of slavery. Some women wow. dressed up as men to get out of slavery. So it is deep. I mean, That's deep. Yeah, I was just about to say that. Yeah, it's deep. I mean, the first chapter of this blew my mind and I was also in tears because they basically outlined how black women, enslaved black women, are their bodies are the foundation of what we know now to be gynecology. Wow. So they did, there was four black women that they did over 40 experiments on. Wow. And the data from that became basically the basis of science. Basis. Wow. Of women and their reproductive organs and childbearing. Like what? And think about that. So they weren't consenting to that because they were slaves. Mm -hmm. They were, they were owned. owned property. The yeah. master gave them to this dude who's a doctor who started experimenting on them and mm -hmm. we still use some of those techniques and drawings today i'm 43 years old i had no idea that black women were the basis of that science right black enslaved women right we never they i know their families weren't paid for that mm -hmm. if they still have their dna put in bottles somewhere they're not getting credit for that the guy mm -hmm. who did the experiment on them is getting credit the founder, yeah, right. quote unquote founder, right. Right, and I'm like, again, that's information that was purposely hid from us so that we wouldn't take ownership of our bodies. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't make reproductive choices for ourselves, mm -hmm. right? We, we wouldn't know that. We wouldn't demand that, like, we need to be compensated and we need to be the subjects of more studies that are ethical now mm -hmm. because our bodies are different. Mm -hmm. because of the myopha and the, and the, you know, the, the passage, um, the middle passage, our bodies are just different, but most science is built off of white male subjects. Mm -hmm. um, you're not a white male. I'm not a white male. <laughs> so why would I be taking medicine that wasn't mm -hmm. practiced on me? Or if it was, we have all these, these historical studies that were done without our consent. Mm -hmm. The Fiji Airmen, the sterilization of black women, the sterilization of Mexican American women, of Filipino women, Vietnamese women. What? Like, no. So yeah, so that was that one. <laughs> so these are the last three. These are the last three that I read. Okay. You know I'm excited. And this one I got from the library where I teach. So uh -huh. redefining realness by Janet Mock. Amazing. Okay. So it's another kind of autobiography, uh -huh. black, black woman, um, and she happens to be a, a black trans woman who is black and Hawaiian. And so it talks about mm. her story of discovering that, you know, um, she's trans um, mm -hmm. and, and dealing with racial identity, mm -hmm. dealing with coming from Hawaii to, quote unquote, the mainland, so mm -hmm. the United States, deep, you know, and she's talking about siblinghood and you know, her and her brother and her relationship with her dad. There's, mm -hmm. um, you know, talk about sexual assault. It just, again, pieces that I can relate and pieces that I can't relate. Right, uh, understandable. Um, and, and Janet Mock, for those who are big TV fans, Janet Mock is the executive producer of the TV show Pose. And Pose okay. is historical. Um, it's on FX because Pose was the first TV show with an all black trans cast. Okay. And so when you think about that, that means that show employed not just one black person. We all know the sitcoms <laughs> and the dramas where there's <laughs> one black person. Uh -huh. This means the whole entire starring cast are paid actors getting mm -hmm. paid for their craft. Mm -hmm. Janet Mock is the executive producer. She's okay. getting paid to sit in that writer's room and make decisions and mm -hmm. say, no, this isn't authentic or we need to bring in a consultant from the ballroom who now we pay for mm -hmm. their expertise. We mm -hmm. need to go find people who survived the HIV AIDS crisis from right. the 70s and the 80s so that they can live, tell us their stories because nobody else ever documented exactly. it. Exactly, yeah. Like, that's where one person can make a difference, right? And mm -hmm. can be in spaces that systemically we've been shut out.
So those were the last three books that I read. So, you know, normally the book I'm reading at the moment, um, you know, is my favorite. Um, and I would say truly my favorite books are all books written by Elon Harris. Um, so Elon Harris was just an amazing author. Um, and I loved it because of the work he wrote, but also the fact that that dude hustled. He went to, he figured out who his audience was, which was black uh, females uh, at the time. And uh, he went, you know, salon to salon, barbershop to barbershop, sold his books. He was taken way too early because I would have loved to see him become like a Oprah, Ava DuVernay of like, taking your books and doing film. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, Elon Harris, again, I just fell in love with because he was writing for, he was a black person writing for black people about black people. Okay. And he was yeah. putting taboos on the table. Like gay people have always existed, always. I don't, people want to act like it didn't. We existed in villages in Africa. We were called different things. Mm -hmm. Right. It may have looked different and been different, but we've always been there. And so the fact that he was bold enough to write about professional athletes and entertainers and their friendships and their relationships. Um, and I, yeah, always will be in my heart. And I got to meet him when I was an undergrad. So that was like a. Oh, that's cool. OK. Bonus. Yeah. He signed the little program. He was talking at the University of Missouri, Columbia. And um, yeah, one of those highlights. Right. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, yeah. good. But I love autobiographies. Mm -hmm. I love people talking about their life. Yeah, so do I. You can learn a, a lot of good tips and experiences based on someone someone who's not even here anymore. You can learn their life story, what learn their mistakes, not make the same mistakes just by learning, reading their autobiography. I'm sorry, I'm getting tongue tied. But doing that, yeah. then you can build off of their experiences and not even have met that person. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And just also to feel not alone. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The relate, the relatability. Yep. yep. I see uh Sean is still on. I see April's on. Thank you for tuning in. Hattie B. McCarter's on. Thank you for tuning in. Uh Clarence is asking for a, a special shout out if you have a, 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 a poet, something, something light that you can bless him with. <laughs> He's too much. I don't even I know. I look. I need to be writing something. It's I, okay. It, not if you don't, because I know uh, we're, we're the time slated here on Zoom. I don't want Zoom to cut us off um, uh, because I, I, I uh, for the meeting itself, I had to select a certain amount of time. And I think we're coming up on that, and I don't want us to be right in the middle of the interview and everything just gets shut right off. No, I, I appreciate, it. and that's Clarence who blessed me. We uh, when I was in town in February. Uh, we mm -hmm. were both at the opening of Soul Burrito, shout out okay. mm -hmm. um, to, to Obi and Nikki, and mm -hmm. um, Clarence blessed me. He, he paid for my food, and I felt, because I, I was on my way to go facilitate, and so okay. I had a time crunch. So I appreciate that, King, and I, you know, I appreciate all my Harrisburg heartbeats. I'm, I miss the people in the bird. I mean, that's 20 years of relationship mm -hmm. and support. I reinvented myself many times. Um, in Harrisburg, human social services, commercial radio, higher ed, launching my own business, and then working mm -hmm. in government. So I miss y'all, and I love y'all. I will forever rep the Berg and rep my people who are who are there. And you know, come visit when we can. Um, you know, in Columbia, Missouri, there's an airport 20 minutes away, um, so you can fly right into Columbia. You can also okay. fly into St. Louis or Kansas City, do a mm -hmm. little sightseeing, and then you know, come visit us in Columbia. That sounds like a plan. I appreciate that. And Build I appreciate all this. The, these Build wonderful your brand in the nuts. Midwest. Yeah, you know, you know it. <laughs> I appreciate all these wonderful nuggets that you gave us. This was a, a, a marvelous uh, live. I hope you had a good time. I hope everyone who tuned in also had a wonderful time and learned a lot. If you, if you have any questions, keep your questions coming, even though we will not be live momentarily. The, we will, the questions will still be answered. If you have any comments, keep the comments coming. Uh, I, I appreciate everything. Is there anything else that you want to follow up on real quick? Just, you know, let's connect. Let's figure out ways to support. You mm -hmm. never know. It could be something as small as I may need have students here. Um, you know, shout out to Stevens College. So I'm, I'm serving as the inaugural director of diversity, equity, and inclusion. So okay. a new role that they created. And um, it's an undergrad residential women's college. Mm -hmm. But they have four graduate programs that are co-ed. Um, 
but you know, I may have a student who wants to go into motivational speaking and so I can mm -hmm. connect, you know, they get to meet you, you know, you give them some time and then maybe I buy your book for them. Like Absolutely. that's the way that we barter, we support, we connect um, because it is who you know and what you know. Exactly. I don't care what anybody says. I know a whole bunch of smart people, but if you're a hermit and you don't use your six degrees of separation, then you're just a really smart hermit. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it is who and what you know. So let's connect. Um, my website is is easy. It's shashawn.com. Yeah, um, so S-H-A-A-S-H-A-W-N.com. Mm -hmm. um, I'm on most of the social medias. I need to get more consistent, but I am on Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram, and my email is thevoice at shashawn.com, but the voice is spelled V-O-Y-C-E, so T-H-E-V-O-Y-C-E at shashawn.com, but nice. You know, let's just connect, support, build, document, celebrate, cheerlead. Let's Enjoy the process. Absolutely. Yes, we definitely will. Definitely will. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And, you know, I, I, as we go, as we close, you know, I do these shows. I put on to put on. So everyone who's watching and those of you through word of mouth, let me know how I can help. Because if you, if you have a business, if you have a product, if you have a positive message and you're looking for a platform to get that information out there, let me know. Inbox me, text me, get a hold of me. I say that all the time. Let me know. I'll schedule you a time. If, if when COVID's done, we'll get you in the lab. Tell everyone to get their pen and their pad. If not, we'll do a live stream via Zoom and we will get that information out and we'll have fun while we, we do it. If, again, if you have a business, if you have a product, if you have a positive message that you're trying to get that information out there, let me know. I will help get that information out there. Let me know how I can help you. But Shoshone, I got a, I got a special guest coming next week. You know who that special guest is? Woo. You got to tune in and see. <laughs> I'll be there to tell you what kind of day I'm having. And I, well, I I do just want to take a minute to say mm -hmm. thank you, King. Again, really, we started that way, but you are a king, a visionary, an thank entrepreneur, you, you. a creative, a coach, a leader, a mentor. Um, you know, you are so many things. And so thank you for your consistency, your persistence, your openness, thank your, you, thank you. your, your embracing of growth and mm -hmm. all of those things. So I thank you not just for this invitation, but I thank you for being period, exclamation point, mm -hmm. then thank you for the things and the contributions that you give to your family, to our communities, uh, to the region, and to the world. So I Absolutely. honor you. Thank you. Thank you. It's nice to hear. I appreciate that. Absolutely. And I do have a special gift for you. Uh, I don't, I can't, I will make sure you get it. You will not, normally this is when I would pass it off to you and you would take that, but I can't give it to you right now. But for your time, for your service, I do have a special gift that I will make sure that you will get. Uh, you will get it. Uh, we'll talk off camera. I'll make sure you get that to you. Absolutely. Thank you guys for tuning in. Live your life with the purpose. Evolve so hard. We got one more thing we got to do before we say goodbye. You remember what that last thing is? What's that last thing? We got to do the money thing. <laughs> Thank you, guys. We love you. Thank you for tuning in. Have a wonderful night. Stay safe. Stay practice your social distancing. Keep washing your hands. Stay clean. We love you all. Have a wonderful night. Thank you very much. Peace.